Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. For years I have talked about it. I felt this pulling, this tugging at my faith to do so. Every so often God would put moments in my life that said, Hey, Scott, you need to be a pastor. For example, my job right before I became a pastor was working with the United States Air Force and their children. And the idea was for me to provide recreational care for all of the kids that would come by. Over and over, God would speak, for example, we're up on uh, playgrounds, uh, actually we're on the playground and I'm swinging swings with three of the kids. Now, at this particular point, I had 15 staff who worked underneath me that would do this and that for the, you know, the kids and so forth. And one child said, Mr. Scott, who's the boss of this place? Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I was going to say me. I said, well, actually, and before I could finish my answer, another kid on the swing said, before you answer, Mr. Scott, I just want you to know, God's the boss. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but even regardless of those moments, I hesitated. And I would come up with every excuse, excuse an excuse. If I do this thing called pastor, that means I have to go to this thing called seminary. If I do this thing, I have to deal with people and church politics. If I do this thing, that means that there is going to be a significant change in our lives, Jenny's and mine. Excuse after excuse, after excuse, which I thought were justified, until I think it was through God's servant, otherwise known as my wife Jenny, who said these words, or actually one word, so? <laughs> and the light bulb went off. So finally we investigated this journey called Pastor Jenny, and I want you to note the the order of importance, Jenny, God, and me. And in our investigation, we were invited to check out a seminary, uh, uh, the one in Berkeley, uh, one weekend, and so we did. And we asked our questions, expressed our excuses, I mean our concerns. <laughs> and each time, God had an answer that said something like this. So... Scott, I have a plan for you. Great. A plan that he didn't let me know about. So the seminary checkout came out and continued as we went to church. And wouldn't you know it, the gospel for that Sunday was Matthew 4, verses 12 through 23. And I can't remember for the life of me what the sermon was about or how the music was played that day. I don't even remember the people. All I remember is myself and Jenny at my side. And God reminded me of a call to get up and go. Don't do it later. Don't do it after lunch. Go and do it now. What I have asked of you. Oh yes, God, <laughs> I remember what you asked of me. I need to be the heir apparent to Bobby Darren and Mel Torme. <laughs> and God said, I'm sure, in one word said, no. <laughs> sorry, that's not what I meant. And I said, well, sorry, God. What you really meant was my name and lights on the greatest Broadway show that was ever made. And God said, no. While those things may still come true, <laughs> there is a greater calling to serve. Serve the one. Spread, serve the one and respond to that service through God's love to people who are, who have, who are sitting in darkness or who have already sat in darkness. You are going to be a fisherman of God. 
And that was in the middle of the worship service. A few, minutes, a few months later, I started his journey for me that I still am him fulfilling today, very grateful and honored to do so, even though I have to wear this funny robe and a clerical. But I want you to look at our gospel. Can you turn to uh, verse 18 for me? As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Now note how Jesus is walking. There isn't a single spring in his step. There isn't a single urgency as far as how he is walking. He is just taking a stroll by the Sea of Galilee, where he sees some brothers fishing. And then verse 19, and then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately, they left their nets and followed them. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. Please note that there is no urgency on Jesus' part. He knows the plan for them. And then he does it again, calling two more brothers out of another boat immediately where they leave their father, and I'm sure their father was quite upset, like, hey, where are you going? But immediately they go and follow Jesus, for Jesus has a calling for these four disciples, for they will be instrumental in following, or instrumental in, spread, in spreading the good news of Jesus Christ all the way through the cross, the empty tomb, and the resurrection, where he stands there in the flesh. There is no urgency on Jesus' part. However, there is an urgency on the disciples' part. It was time for them to get up and go and begin a journey following a calling that has been set before them concerning an urgent love that has been given to them. Well, I do not expect you to be like the disciples or the prophets found in Scripture or even a pastor. What kind of calling that God has given you has caused you to be pulled and tugged at your faith? Also, when you think of that calling, how many times do you come with, up with excuses that cause you to hesitate or even ignore the words that God has given to you? For example, Comparing you and yourself, and the, you and yourself, comparing you and your gifts to other people and their gifts is an excuse. Stating your age hinders you to go is an excuse. Check out the Old Testament sometime. Methuselah. 900 years old, or Abraham, by no means were they spring chickens, but they still listened to God and made a difference by faith. Or Samuel or David, how they listened to God as youth and they changed the world. God has called us to follow, to get up immediately and follow our, our Savior's lead with an urgent love to people who need to hear from you, to be the light for them who are in darkness. And I know that all of you know plenty of people who are. You are asked to be the light. So get up out of your boat and follow.